at some notes uh, dealing with Pythagorean theorem and what's called the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. It's kind of like looking at not just um, right triangles, but also other types of triangles like the acute triangles and the obtuse triangles. All right, so let's put some things together here. If something is a right triangle, the largest hypotenuse of the triangle is, or the largest angle, I should say, the largest angle of the triangle is equal to 90 degrees. Then the triangle is a right triangle. And the following relationship is true. That the leg squared, not angle, leg plus, or the leg, this should be hypotenuse, is equal to the leg squared plus the leg squared. So that's what it should equal. And we're going to make this a little bit bigger so things kind of fit on there just a little bit more nice. We're going to remove some of this height. There we go. Okay. And so here's our picture and the legs are three and two. And what I want to see is a calculation that's, that checks to see if those things are equal. Well, let's use uh, math.new to check that calculation. We have two squared plus three squared. And we're trying to check if that is equal to 3.61 squared. Now this is an approximation, so we just need to be very close. Well, 3.61 squared is about 13.032. And nine squared plus four squared is 13. Those are close enough. Like if we're within kind of a, a tenth, we're looking really good. So that's good evidence there. I'm going to screen capture that. So I'll capture that. It'll copy into our clipboard. Oh, let's try it again. This time we'll copy it to our clipboard. Perfect. Now we're going to do the same thing here, but if the largest angle of a triangle is less than 90 degrees, then the triangle is an acute triangle. An acute triangle we're going to have the hypotenuse and the leg and the leg, but the hypotenuse is going to be smaller. It's not big, it's smaller. We're going to kind of repeat this process here, but with these numbers. So we have a 4, a 3.16, and a 4.24. So we're going to say we have a 3.16 squared, a 4 squared and we're trying to check if that equals 4.24 squared that's what we're checking so we have the 4 squared that's 16 the 3.16 squared is 9.986 so we want to see is 4.24 squared equal to this and it's not. So this side that had the, the long side of the triangle, it's smaller than the other two put together. So it's kind of like your hypotenuse is too small. If the hypotenuse is too small, not equal, not greater, but too small, it's going to be acute. Oh, let's copy and paste our little bit of math work into there.
now we got this next one. It is definitely an obtuse triangle if the largest angle of the triangle is greater than 90 degrees, then it's an obtuse triangle. And when it's an obtuse triangle, the hypotenuse is bigger than the two legs squared. All right, so let's use our numbers here, and we're going to type them into our equation calculator. We had 3.16 squared. And the other two are going to be 2 and 1.41 equals 2 squared plus 1.41 squared. Okay, 3.16 squared is almost 10. 2 squared is 4. 1.41 squared is, this side is not going to be big enough. And what this tells me is that the hypotenuse is extra large. So the hypotenuse is extra large. It's bigger than the other two squares put together. That says that it's obtuse. So large hypotenuse obtuse, small hypotenuse acute, equal hypotenuse, and it's a right triangle. All right, so in this next one, uh, I just want you to try and create three of your own. And you can use this Desmos tool that's linked right here. But the last thing that I want to say is, like, how do I solve these things? Well, uh, let's see if I can take this picture, and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to insert a text box, paste the picture in there. If I click on the Arrange button, I can move it around. I see three sides. And the hypotenuse is the 9.8 squared, so I'm going to put that by itself. And we're going to add the other two squares with it, x squared plus 7.1 squared. All right, let's click on these squares, make them into different types of numbers here that are equivalent. I'm going to subtract the 50.41 from both sides. And I can do that just by dragging it over. Awesome. Now that I have this number, I want to square root both sides. There's more than one way to do that. I could drag the squared on top. I can also click the equal sign. And I can highlight the E and click the square root button. And that says square root both sides. Square root of squared becomes x. Square root of 45.63 becomes 6.55. So there's my work. I solved for x. And it all came from this Pythagorean theorem equation. I'm going to just solve one more here. Actually, no, we'll do, we'll do each of them here. We'll go ahead and do all four. So I'm going to copy this picture and do it again. When you copy a picture, whether you screenshot it or clicked copy, if you insert a text box, you can drop it right into math.new. It makes it a little bit easier. So again, I'm going to have a leg squared plus a leg squared and those added together equal the hypotenuse squared. It doesn't really matter if you put this, uh, which side you put the two things added together and which side you put the thing by itself. What does matter is that the hypotenuse is the part that's by itself. So that's our x, it's across from the right angle. The other numbers are 4.1 and 6.1. Get this to fit on our screen a little bit better. So I'm going to just click through and start transforming this equation. So we got all this stuff going on. And now we're going to square root both sides. And the answer is 7.35. So I can take a picture of this work here.
copy and paste it over to uh, Google Doc for the notes. And then let's see what we can do to fill in these last two. Okay, this next one's going to be a little bit different. Let's see why. Insert a text box. When I look at this, I can make it a little bit bigger for us to see. There we go. I noticed that the long side is 14.9. I know it's the long side because it's across from the right angle. And the 14.9 is going to be squared all by itself. And I'm going to add the other two things after I square them. In other words, I'll have x squared added to 4.5 squared. So these two are added because they're the legs. And the hypotenuse is by itself. So again, we're just clicking through, trying to square each of these numbers. I'll subtract 20.25 from both sides. Then I'm going to square root each side. So I can highlight the E and click on the square root button. That'll give me 14.2. So 14.204 is my number. We got a lot going on here. Let's highlight it so we can screen capture, take a picture and put it in here. And if I think about it, 14.204 makes sense because it's the hypotenuse is almost 15. This X is close to the hypotenuse, but not quite. And so 14.204 makes sense in terms of the number being one that would fit there. Okay, we have our last one, and we're all done with these notes. It's kind of a short set of notes. I'm going to insert a text, throw this picture in there. Now I'm going to put these pieces together in a way that makes sense with our leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. That means I'll have the hypotenuse squared by itself. And I'll have one leg squared, so 6.3 squared, plus the other leg squared. And now I can solve for x. Now I can't add these until I try to square them first. That's just a minor note. So let's square each of those. Then I can combine them. Now I can square root both sides by dragging that 2 over on top of the other number. The power of 2 dragged to the other side makes it do the opposite operation, which in this case would be square rooting. And the square root of 84.58 is 9.197. So we'll screen capture that, put it into our notes, and then we're done. There's the notes all filled out.